Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna look at some Amazon bestsellers. For anyone who is looking to start selling on Amazon, I wanna just give you some ideas and inspiration of what does really well on Amazon and you know, just kind of get the juices flowing, get the ball rolling with you looking for good products to sell. I've got tons of product research videos here on my channel, but today we're gonna look specifically at the Amazon best sellers list. So if you do like this video, I would love if you would subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and with that, we're gonna jump right in. All right, we're on amazon.com, and just so you guys know, I do have a software installed in my Chrome browser. It's called Helium 10. I talk about it all the time on my channel. If you are interested in trying out Helium 10 for free I do have a link in my description of this video and you'll be able to see everything that I'm seeing once you install the Google Chrome extension so that's what I'm gonna look at right now and to get started I'm going to just scroll over here to the top the top <laughs> so the top left hand corner I can click on all and see the bestsellers list or I can just click on the tab right up here in the and the options up top so we'll just go ahead and do that but there are two different places to find it and we can see what the bestsellers are for kitchen and dining right off of the bat Stanley Cup is anyone surprised absolutely not <laughs> we do see another kind of water bottle and water bottles are notoriously popular on Amazon they just do really really well but because they do well does not mean that you should sell them as a beginner because think about it do you really want to try to compete with Stanley cups no, because everyone knows Stanley Cups and they have dominance in the market. And even if it's not them, it's going to be another water bottle that a lot of people know or that is pushed very heavily by influencers. So that's not a place that you would try to compete. But we are doing this just for inspiration. And one thing that I want to mention is that if we're looking at a product like the Stanley Quencher, if we click on it, we can see that they have 62,000 reviews, which is an insane amount of reviews i can't even imagine having a listing with this many reviews because it just tells you that the reviews are just a fraction of the sales so if they have 62,000 reviews that means that that's probably a tenth of what they've sold or a 20th or even you know it's some small percent of what they've actually sold so i think about it and it just blows my mind Using Helium 10, I can already see a lot of data right up here at the top. The 30-day revenue was one point, almost 1.5 million, and they're selling about 42,000 units per month, which is a really, really high number. I mean, that is just next level. But obviously, we know the virality and the popularity of these cups, so I guess I'm not shocked, but I... The numbers are huge <laughs> as someone who does this regularly even for me i'm like whoa that's that's crazy so anyway the whole reason that i'm showing you this is because i want to give you kind of that thought process that you don't need to sell a viral product to make money on amazon you're not going to try to compete with stanley cups because you can't but what you can do is potentially provide an accessory to this very very popular product that could potentially do well for you so what would someone who is buying a stanley Stanley cup maybe need an extra of or what would be a good supplement to this product that is already selling and I will say that in my subscription that I used to have on Instagram don't have it on IG anymore but I do have a monthly membership which is the equivalent it's linked in the description if you want to check it out but either way I had given this product idea which was these little things right here let me scroll back up short can show you straw covers for these straws for the Stanley cups and I'm not telling you to sell this now this ha has come and gone as a product that would have done well at a certain time trying to launch it now is not gonna do well for you so don't do it but I'm just saying that you know kind of the time sensitivity of certain products especially the ones that become very popular if you're gonna try to do an add-on to it you know you want to kind of move on it quickly before there are these listings already existing that have this many thousands of reviews. Because at the time that I was looking at this, the average review count was under 200, maybe even under 100 at the time because I caught it at the right time. And that's why I recommended it to the members of my subscription. So at the time when this was, you know, kind of becoming a product or an accessory that people knew of, it was a very, very good opportunity. And I do know some members of the subscription, even some students who launched this product and have done really well with it. 
of course, this product is super, super cheap and we want to stay away from products that are this cheap under $10. We don't want to go for that. But, you know, sometimes it makes sense. And at the time at that I recommended this product, it wasn't selling for five. It was selling for like 10 to 15. So it did make sense at that time. All of that to say that you can, you know, use the bestsellers list as a way to think about what other add-ons you can provide that would complement this very popular product because if it's already that much in demand and already that popular then things that go with it would also you know it, it would make sense that people would also want products to accessorize it or to make it easier to use or more convenient or whatever if stanley cup was smart they would start selling their own branded ones <laughs> but you know that's probably small fish to them this is a low-cost product and they are selling you know two dollar water bottles for 35 dollars so they're probably not very interested in selling a product like this but either way you can see that people have found different ways of differentiating some of them are doing like little rainbow right here the strawberry we've got ones with little sand a hat you could definitely make them seasonal or whatever but I just think that this is kind of a cool approach to product research and it doesn't always have to be so so intense it, sometimes it can be fun to kind of think of different ways that you can improve already existing products so that's the first thing we saw I did not plan that at all but that's just the first thing that popped up let's see what else we can see here more of these cups and then we've got some food scales we are in the kitchen and dining category so it makes a lot of sense that we're getting kind of similar products here this is one that's interesting to me this spandex tablecloth as someone who has hosted my fair share of events i had my sister's bachelorette party here i always throw my son a birthday party so i'm always looking for kind of party accessories and things to decorate for things like that and so this one kind of caught my eye, $684,000 over the last 30 days. Good for them. They are doing the dang thing. And they've got 16,695 ratings, which is really, 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 really high. With this one, it's a little bit more tricky to think of how you could kind of piggyback off of it or accessorize off of it because it's so simplistic. It's just a spandex tablecloth. I wonder if this would be good to bundle potentially with chair covers, like, you know, the chair version of this product. But sometimes what you want to make sure that you're not doing is trying to bundle together two main products. A bundle is not supposed to be multiple main products. It's supposed to be one main product and one add-on, two add-ons, five, ten add-ons, but there has to be very clearly a main product and everything else is a complement to that main product. What I would worry about with what I just said about doing the chair ones, it's like which one is the main product and which one is the accessory because then it gets difficult when it comes to pricing because you know that you're selling two very valuable products, but your customer might look at that and say, well, why are they selling for $19.99 when I can just get the table covers themselves for $15.99 and then, you know, buy the chair covers separately. People will try to do math in their own minds. So that's why really the essence of a good bundle is having that main product and then everything else that you're adding onto it is made to make the customer feel like they're just getting a really good deal. So it's like, oh, not only do I get the main thing, but I also get this like little case for it or this little cover for it or this little, you know, whatever. So it's supposed to be something that's like minor to increase the perceived value of the product that's being sold, that main product. So anyway, with this one, I don't really see a great way of bundling or even differentiating outside of color. There's not really much that you could do here, but this actually is not a bad idea to potentially add a table runner, but it depends on what they're doing and what event they're having. They a table runner might make sense for a dinner, but if they're just using this for like, you know, some type of a booth at a fair or something, a table runner wouldn't make sense. So that's the other thing too, when it comes to bundles, you can't just make up why people would want the bundle. You want to have a legitimate reason and you want to know that people actually will utilize and value the bundle. If you put a bunch of random things together in a package, it's not going to make a good offer if the people who are buying that product don't actually want what it is you're putting together. 
right? So you have to do your own research. I would definitely read the competitors' reviews to see if people are mentioning like, I love this product, but I wish it came with a table runner. Then you're getting a little bit more legitimate feedback to go off of that that bundle would make sense. So I hope that that adds up for you guys. So yeah, dang. Can you imagine like explaining to your accountant that <laughs> you make, what, $700,000 in a month from selling tablecloths on Amazon? That is just honestly mind blowing. Obviously this is just revenue, not profit. So profit would be a percentage of this, I would assume a good maybe 25% would make sense to me. So even at that rate, you're still looking at 200, 250K in profit per month. So I think that they're doing very, very well for themselves and that's great for them. Okay, let's go back to the best sellers list and let me go to a different category so we don't spend all our time looking in kitchen and dining. So I'm gonna go down to pet supplies and let's see what is here. We've got these puppy pee pads, we've got cat litter, we have got bags, which I've looked at in the past, we've got cat food. Um, let's see, what is this? Oh yeah, more poop bags, but see how this one comes, this is a good example, how this one comes with a dispenser. So the main product is the poop bags, but the kind of bundle and the you know, little thing that you're getting that's extra is that dispenser to make it easier to use the product. So it's not like that dispenser is a product, a standalone product, but it's a good add-on to what is already being sold. What else do we have here? Lots of food. This is a dog toy. It looks like a little ball. I would not recommend that you guys sell food or anything edible, so that includes food for animals, <laughs> simply because of the liability. You don't want anyone to get sick, you don't want to feel like you're responsible for anyone's health or what they digest, so I personally would stay away from it, but you know, the choice is yours. Okay, let's look at this silly product here, because it's always funny to me when I see a product that's just like, what? But it's making a lot of money, it's entertaining to me. So let's just see how much this little duck toy is making. It's so cute, I have to say. It says no stuffing. Okay, so this doesn't even have like material inside of it. So I'm sure this is extremely cheap to make. They're only selling it for $5.99, but I would guess that they get it for less than 50 cents, honestly. Especially in the quantities that they're buying, the more you buy, the cheaper it is. So even here we can see 79,000 units over 30 days is a lot of product. And they're doing $476,000 in revenue per month. Absolutely nuts. Like I, wow, that's, that's nuts. <laughs> okay, they've got other variations. I think their whole thing is that they're not stuffed. So just in case, I guess, your pet were to puncture it or something, it wouldn't create a big mess or a safety hazard to the animal. So it's a good idea. I mean, I, I get it. Even though I don't have my own pets, I see why someone would buy this product. Once again, imagine you're talking to your accountant and they're like, wow, you do really well for yourself. What do you do? Oh, well, I sell on Amazon. What do you sell? Um, it's a, a duck. <laughs> a, a duck. <laughs> That's hilarious. And I love it. If this doesn't show you that you can make money selling the most obscure products, I don't know what will convince you. Like this to me is fun because it shows you that there's so much money to be made. And that's why it's always ironic to me or kind of funny to me when people say, well, can you still make money on Amazon? I'm like, yes, look at the stuff that people are selling every day. Like, yes, absolutely you can. It's just all about finding your own lane. Look at this right here, wishbone made to look this way. I don't know what it's made out of. It says it's very durable. I guess it's flavored. It's flavored like bacon. They've got chicken. They've got peanuts. <laughs> that is so interesting. $854,000, you guys. Almost a million dollars a month selling a chew toy. Like, Amazon is an unserious place. There are so many people who shop on here. Oh my gosh. This stuff, it excites me because I'm like... If this person can make a mil, not a million, 850, let me not drag it, but you get what I'm saying. They can make so much money in a month selling this silly little product, then 
I can definitely find something that I can make 10K a month off of if these people are doing 850K, you know? Okay, we're gonna look in one more category and let's see what that is going to be. Let's go back to bestsellers here. Find a new category. I apologize for the noise, you guys. There's always planes flying overhead. Let's go to, hmm, what looks good? Let's go to toys and games and see what we can find here. Okay, uh, gold balloons. Looks like you would use it for a balloon arch. You've got 5,000 reviews. Okay, let's click on this one here. And they are doing, just give helium 10 a second to generate some of the numbers for us. They are doing, drum roll please, $272,000 per month in revenue, which is not bad. Selling balloons, like, I will take it. I will definitely take it. Just keep in mind that all of these products that I've looked up have multiple variations. So I don't know how much the gold version itself is making, but they're obviously choosing to make the gold version the main image for a reason. So that probably is the most popular variation. Something I like about Helium 10, let's see if it works for this product. It doesn't work for all of them, but for certain products, if you pull up the X-ray tool, which is part of the Google Chrome extension, you can see broken down how much each variation makes, but not always. So let me just give it a second to load because I'd be very interested to see if my suspicion is correct about the gold ones. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We can see different ones here. Okay, so it's a little bit difficult to explain, but the ASIN is what identifies that product and the variation of that product itself. So here when you scroll over to the right, you can see that the revenue varies depending on what the variation is. So we can see like the blue one does really well. We can see the black one does pretty well. I mean, whoa, look at this one. <gasps> the white one, 454K. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That's insane. That's insane. <laughs> I'm like trying to wrap my mind around these numbers because they're really, really high. I wonder if this brand has been around for a long time. I'm not quite sure. Those are things that you can look at using Helium 10 as well. We're just not going to do it in this video because that's not what this is about. But this is just the way that my mind works as an experienced seller. I'm just thinking like their logistics, the behind the scenes, what they're doing, what they're not doing. It's just, you know, kind of cool to think about. But yeah, these are some of the products that are doing well in these different categories. You can scroll and click on any category you want and just kind of see what the top sellers are. If you go back, um, you can go right here down the side and you can click on any category, health and household, which is the category I sell in. You can look at subcategories within that specific category to narrow down a little bit further. And then you can go and look at, I don't know, beauty and personal care. That's a big one as well. And you can see the most popular thing here is this rosemary oil, just, just for gigs. Let's see how much they're making. And that's going to be the last thing we look at before we wrap it up here. 752K selling oil. Like, child, I rest my case. I rest my case. Everybody sell on Amazon. <laughs> All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Let me do another one. I just want to make sure that there was one version. <clears throat> All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and following along with me as we looked at some Amazon bestsellers. There's so much opportunity on Amazon in 2024, and I'm here to continue to help you and teach you along the way. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.